All right, what's going on, YouTube? Welcome to a qualifier set between Marine Lord and Probe to the $20,000 Genesis Age of Empires 4 tournament. Two StarCraft II Titans battling it out against each other here. Marine Lord currently is the seventh on the ESL Pro Tour 2021-2022 ratings in Europe, whereas Probe is the first one in the Oceania um, section. I think that also includes Australia, potentially. But I'm not 100% sure about that. I'm not that much into StarCraft. But anyways, two huge names in StarCraft. I casted the entire day in the EGC main channel with Aussie Jungle. And we have seen quite a lot of impressive sets. But those sets that weren't casted on that channel, I can cast them on mine. So you will be seeing quite a lot of these sets in here. It's a decider set. It's a best of three. Which means whoever wins gets into the main event of the $20,000 Genesis AOE 4 event. The rules are pretty simple in terms of civilizations. If you win a game with a civilization, you cannot use that civilization in the set anymore. From what we have seen in the games that we've casted, French were the dominant civilization, and it looks like we're opening with a French mirror over here in between Marine Lord and Probe. These are recorded games, uh, because the games actually happened uh, earlier today, but I wanted to use this opportunity to get as much casting done on actual tournament environment as I can. So, welcome to game number one in this best of three in between Probe and Marine Lord. On the right side, Marine Lord is uh, blue French, and on the left, we also have French for Probe in red. So French Mirrors, it's a very, very punishing mirror. It's a matchup where if you fall behind in night numbers, it's going to be really, really hard to work your way back. So small things when it comes to execution, taking slightly better fights, uh, having a slightly better macro or micro could actually decide the outcome of this game here. The map is Dry Arabia. That's always the first uh, map of the game. And you see Probe actually placed his house on top of a straggler tree. I'm not sure if this is conscious from him and he's just trying to remove that tree for whatever reason, or this is something that's just a mistake. I feel like the straggler trees can help quite a bit, because uh, you can just send a couple of villagers from the TC on them in case you don't want to spend them all the way out to the wood line. So if you just need, let's say, 100 wood quickly, you can send a couple of villas from here to the stragglers. It's not really a big deal, I think, to remove them. They're not as important as they are in Age of Empires 2, but I still believe that it's a little surprising that Probe actually placed that house on the straggler tree itself. Meanwhile, for Marine Lord, he's got a beautiful back gold mine over here. Very, very nice to start with. The bears are also rather safe. He's got one wood line to work with to the south of his town center. Speaking of gold mines, there is also a back gold mine here for Probe. And honestly, the maps are quite uh, balanced, I must say. If you just look at the resource placement at the starting base of the players, it's almost as if this was mirrored. So that's very, very nice for the balance here. Marine Lord brings in quite a lot of sheep here with his scout. He is at 5 beneath the TC. I think he collected way more than what Probe did, but I'm wrong on that. Probe has the same amount, so so far it's just a very very similar start for both players. Now I think it's extremely hard to evaluate who has the upper hand here. Marine Lord has been grinding the game like crazy. He has been pretty active in Age of Empires 2 as well, so in general he's quite familiar with the Age of Empires franchise, whereas Probe just comes over from uh, StarCraft. I think one thing that we need to highlight here is that currently, Marine Lord is the highest rated Age of Empires 4 player. Obviously, that ladder is very, very flexible and it keeps changing every hour, but I think it tells you a lot that Marine Lord was able to get to the top one at any time. Whoops, wrong hotkey, excuse me for that. So, School of Cavalry coming in here for Marine Lord as uh, he's going to place it right next to his wood line. Whereas on the other side, the School of Cavalry is also coming in um, by Probe. Probe actually delayed his Lumber Camp compared to his opponent, but that's something that you can do with the French. Because the core concept is that you don't need wood, at least a lot of wood, in Feudal Age with the French. You simply use your School of Cavalry to make cavalry units, you don't need to mill the stable or an archer range at the beginning. Especially in the French mirror, going for an archer range isn't really a thing because your archers would just die to the opponent's knights. It's probably going to be more about the knight wars early on, and then it depends. We could see sort of knight and spearmen from both players, or if one player goes for knight and spearmen and the other one is just pure knights, that player will probably start adding archers after. 
it looks like the two buildings will finish approximately at the same time and we should have feudal age in for both players at around uh, 345 350 or so One of the things I'm noticing over here is that Probe has built a house close to his gold mine. It seems like a small thing, but it gives him some extra vision. It's not an awful lot, but it definitely helps uh, spotting additional raids that could come in from this side. So that's a nice little touch there for Probe. He is almost done with the School of Cavalry. Just to be sure, Marine Lord is going to check out what his opponent is up to. But really, at this point uh, in the game balance with the French Mirrors, it's all gonna come down to Night Wars. So... Just like in the case of Age of Empires 2, where French or the Franks play Scout Wars in Feudal Age, it's gonna be Night Wars in uh, Feudal Age for uh, the French over here. Identical Feudal Age times for the two players here. So, looks like we'll have a probe moving out for the berries. We'll see if Marine Lord does that. I haven't seen him going for it just yet. He's starting to run out of uh, sheep though. So at some point he's gonna have to look for a different source of food. He's got one patch of Huntables to the north and one to the south of his base. Whereas for Probe, both of those uh, huntable patches are to the south of his starting position. Here come the knights. And from this point on, this is just going to be coming down to a very, very delicate micro. Whoever can get some better charges in, potentially isolate one knight from the opponent. That's going to be the key. Obviously, once we get a little deeper into Feudal Age, uh, we could see Chivalry coming in to heal those knights. But for now, it looks like Probe is the one that gets the first charge in on the opponent's knights. And as I said... This is what I was talking about. You just gotta pull your knight the moment your opponent gets the first successful charge in. The reason why these scouts are being mixed in here is because uh, if you have a knight and a scout, you're trying to bait the opponent's charge attack with your scout because your scout is self-healing anyways. So you're just trying to bait that charge and then you charge in yourself. Here comes the charge of a probe. And you see, that's what Marine Lord was trying to do. Make the scout stay in front and that way he's gonna absorb the charge. That's exactly what Marine Lord needs, and you see, once the charge is done, um, we will see for our probe retreating back home for the time being. Looks like it's just gonna be Night Wars for quite a long time over here. There's a second stable, well, not really a second stable, it's the first stable coming in for probe, but it's the second cavalry production building alongside the School of Cavalry, so he's gonna go much heavier on the knights than his opponent will initially, whereas Marine Lord is adding villagers on stone, so he wants to go for a second town center. Now, I'm not necessarily a big fan of this here. I feel like French mirrors are so snowboy that you can't actually afford to go for stone mining. It takes so much time to get that second TC up. You would need to mine a couple of stone. You need to chop a lot of wood to make that second TC. By the time it pays off, I feel like you will be overrun by just more units. So, I'm not necessarily a big fan of that for Marine Lord. Looks like so far Probe is just uh, sitting back home. He already has villagers on the berries. Looking at the upgrades, no mill upgrades, uh, no eco upgrades at all so far for Probe, who's also going for stone. So looks like uh, he's going to think about a second town center as well, and we could be in for a long game if both players play a somewhat passive uh, feudal age over here. So far it's 29 villagers for Probe. Marine Lord is at 29 as well. I just think that the two players are so, so head-to-head -head here. Pretty much mirroring each other's movements. Even the maps are somewhat uh, the mirror of each other. So this is just as even as it could possibly get. Uh, now here comes Marine Lord. Looks like we're gonna have uh, one more night for him here. So that's gonna force Pro back for the time being. Uh, but on the other hand, there are some knights charging in here as well. There was a dead villager here from Marine Lord. I think the first of the game. And this is where Marine Lord is gonna start becoming uh, pretty exposed to these uh, knights simply because his opponent has way more than what he can have. It's a stable plus a school of cavalry versus just a school of cavalry. Defensive tower coming in here for Marine Lord as we already have chivalry finished for our red player. Chivalry is on the way as well for uh, Marine Lord as it looks like we're gonna have a bit of a knight scuffle on north. Looks like one knight went down from probe. Uh, I don't think Marine Lord lost any of them but there is one knight over here that's pretty weak so Probe could try to loop around with one knight and charge in on it to finish it off. In the middle, looks like uh, Marine Lord will force this one back as well. Now it's going to be self-healing for both of those groups of knights. Looking at uh, Probe right now, he's sitting on 140 stone, however. Marine Lord has the wood for the TC, but not the stone. He was forced off from the stone for a time being, and there's the second stable as well from our blue player. 
it very much seems like Marine Lord will spot the stone miners over here. So that's the raiding potential that he needs over here. We do have uh, probe retreating as well. He probably knows that this is the most exposed area of his economy, so to say. If he didn't know it up until now, he is going to realize it now. The knights charge in, and there goes one villager from Mr. Probe. Maybe a second one as well. Looks like the knights will get it, so that's minus two wills. But now Probe knows that his opponent's army is in here, so he could just try to come in and retaliate, and he's doing so with two knights coming from the right side to hit the wood line, and simultaneously we'll have six knights hitting the hunters on the north. Potentially, that could be pretty massive. Indeed, here come the knights, and that's just such an exposed area for Marine Lord. They actually go for the gold miners instead of the hunters on the north. The gold miners will survive, but Marine Lord will be off from gold, which is a disaster in a mid order fight with knights, because he really needs gold to keep pumping those knights out. And you see, Probe is even like, okay, I'm just gonna burn down your mining camp, sort of try to delay you mining gold as much as I can. You see, Marine Lord is pulling all the knights back, so I don't think that this is gonna burn down. Villagers will get us into the tower, so Probe won't be able to kill any more villagers here. But now he's got the resources for a second town center, whereas uh, for Marine Lord, looks like he also has it, but he's having a bit of an issue with food and gold currently. Looks like a second TC is coming in here for Marine Lord already. It's gonna secure the Huntables and the Berries as well. It's a pretty nice town center. Whereas on the other side, we'll have a second TC as well for Probe. He's also going for the Hunt. That seems to be the general approach of the players, just to place it on the food. Because that's probably the most important thing right now, securing the food for yourself. Your gold is rather secure, close to your TC, but you want to expand towards these patches of Huntables so that you don't have to make farms this early on. Looks like Probe loses another Knight over here, and now I'm curious about the KDs. Which is so far 6 kills by Marine Lord, only 4 losses. So slightly better trade so far by Marine Lord. Looks like we'll have two barracks uh, being added over here for uh, Probe as here comes Marine Lord. That's gonna be a couple of villagers dead here from our red player. And here come the knights as well. So Marine Lord will probably disengage, but he will be able to take down two wheels before uh, the knights from our red player charge in. So he's slowly grinding down the village numbers of Probe. Currently Marine Lord is at 38 and Probe is at 39 actually. So, despite all those villager losses, it looks like Probe still has a one villager lead. Marine Lord has spotted the barracks, so here's the question. What is he gonna do? Is he gonna add his own barracks and just play Mirror, Knight, and Spears? Or potentially think about an archer range to try and pick off the Spearman? Here come the Knights once again on the gold mine. Nice pull from Probe. And for now, it looks like he's just gonna pull all the villagers back to the TC. I don't think that he should have pulled them all the way back, because I don't think that they were necessarily exposed after the knights arrived. But it looks like he's gonna be off from gold for a brief moment. Meanwhile, we have two TCs for both players, uh, as uh, Probe is pretty close to finishing those barracks. Whereas on the other side, it looks like we'll have an archer range, so this is what I was talking about. Once we have Spearman in the party, the opponent can decide if he's mixing in his own Spearman as well and just try to play a completely mirror matchup with the unit composition, or the alternative is that he's mixing in Archers to try and pick off the Spearman. In the long run, I believe mixing in Archers will pay off, simply because once you get to Castle Age, we could get some Arbaletri out for the French that just melt the armor of the opponent's cavalry, so that could be an option. This could be a nice one here for Probe, it's just one knight, but... It could harass those villagers so much. And remember that this knight can heal itself out of combat, so Probe can just pull that and uh, heal it up for a later fight. Looks like the knight might actually go down here. Yep. Heat seeking arrows will finish off the knight over there, so Probe loses another one over there. So far, it's 9 kills for Marine Lord, only 4 losses, taking slightly better trades than his opponent does. Currently, we're looking into 51 villagers versus uh, 50 villagers game so pretty much even over here but it looks like marine lord will be able to pick up a couple of villager kills here so suddenly marine lord will take over economy wise and the spearmen while well, they're coming in they are kind of slow to catch up to the knights and you see that the moment they arrive marine lord will just pull his knights at this point this civilization matchup i feel like is just pure rts skills it is just about pretty much doing the same thing as your opponent just trying to do it slightly better than he does Looks like the archers will start to be amassed over here 
for uh, Marine Lord. He will need like five of them or so to start picking off the Spearmen. Obviously, those archers will struggle against the knights, but that's just a small thing here. You want to use them to pick off the spears. Looking at the resources, Probe is floating a huge amount of gold right now, but not a lot of food. Whereas on the other side, Marine Lord's eco seems to be a lot more balanced. And at this pace, and with the fact that Probe isn't really pushing him, it's possible Marine Lord will think about going into Castle Age here. So what would Castle Age give to Marine Lord? The answer is rather simple. It would give uh, Crossbowman or Arbletchie for the French here. And that's something that could swing the battle heavily in your favor. Plus, of course, the Castle Age Knight upgrade would also help immensely. Here comes the Knight Charge from Marine Lord. Looks like he's actually able to get a nice charge in here. Now the archers arrive and he's going to start picking off the Spearmen. Probe is still having some food issues here. And the fact that his berries are being pushed now doesn't help on that. Uh, looks like this is a very, very good fight here for Marine Lord. Is it enough though for him? Because that's a lot of spearmen and suddenly Marine Lord might not be able to take this fight and he's gonna be forced back. He's going to lose the archers, but I think he sort of calculated that already. He can save the archers and the knights over here, so he just, uh, just decides to save the knights. He's very close to Castle Age, whereas Probe seems like he's going full fuel here. But then Probe needs to force this issue and make something happen before his opponent gets to Castle Age and gets the Castle Age upgrades in. Marine Lord is at 65 villagers and Probe is at 62, so slight eco lead right now for uh, Marine Lord. Also operating with a lot of defensive towers on the berries, on the hunt as well. Here comes the force of Probe and that's a pretty scary force uh, to think about. And it looks like we also have the infantry siege upgrade for uh, Probe. Getting those all important battering grams in. That's not an amazing charge here for Marine Lord because he ran into the Spearman. But he picked off some of those Spears with that charge. So he still has to be somewhat satisfied with that. Remember, it's all about delaying Probe right now. Who is trying to get those battering grams out. You see, uh, the Guild Hall is going to be the age free building of uh, Marine Lord over here. He's building it with 8 villagers. So he really wants to rush that Castle Age up. The problem that he's facing is that the moment he reaches Castle Age... His opponent will know that he needs to fight right now. So I would expect Probe to force a fight wherever he is the moment Marine Lord reaches Castle Age. Because if Marine Lord gets the Castle Age upgrades in, that could be pretty massive. Uh, so Candled Saddles and uh, Veteran Knights, both of those are pretty important. Plus, Crossbowman could actually help out quite a bit here. And you see, Probe is moving up. Marine Lord still needs to hold this one for like. A minute and a half or so until he gets his upgrades in but I'm not a hundred percent sure he has that much time here that's the difficult thing his opponent knows exactly that it's now or never you gotta fight this one otherwise your opponent will just have a castle age army against a feudal age army the knight numbers seem to be rather even it's 14 knights from uh, probe and you got 14 as well from marine lord but there's a lot of spearman support as well a battering ram is coming for the town center the knight upgrade is almost in this fight is a little premature potentially, as uh, we also have a couple of uh, Arboletria being popped out from multiple ranges. Spearman now chasing down the Knights, and the Knights from Probe are just trying to focus down the opponent's Arboletria. But here it is, Veteran Royal Knight are in. This is the type of fight that Marine Lord wants to take. Does he have enough? We will have to see. He's losing quite a lot here in this battle, and I feel like the numbers are still better for uh, Probe. 16 army only for Marine Lord, and his opponent has 31. It's a weaker composition of units right now for Pro because he doesn't have the Castle Age upgrades, but he's got way more, and the Spearmen are really paying for their price. There's just no archers to pick them off, so... Yeah, sure enough, these are Feudal Age Spearmen, but they're still Spears, so... They pack a big punch, and replacing those Knights is just very, very painful for Marine Lord right now. It takes a lot of time to rebuild them. Looks like Marine Lord cleans up the Spearmen on the north, as things stand... He might even be able to clean this entire thing up. But behind this one, his eco is sort of in ruins. He has had to abandon this wood line. He has had to abandon his farming eco. And you see Probe is just applying more and more pressure over here. The battering ram is still alive and the TC is slowly going down. Marine Lord is still trying to turtle this out. And all he needs is like 10 crossbowmen here to pick off all those knights. And then those crossbows can also support against the spearmen but currently marine lord just doesn't have the numbers it's 11 army and he sort of seems to be stuck on that number and if that tc goes down 16 villagers will be exposed for these knights over here as marine lord is losing his knights 
He has invested a lot of resources into Castle Age, and I don't think that he has gotten enough return value here. He wasn't able to finish his uh, technologies. As you see, he's jumping out of the villagers, trying to repair the TC as long as possible. But he's now down to 5 army. And it very much seems like Probe is just flooding army through the map, you see. Spearmen and knights being flooded. And as things stand, I feel like the brute force 4 Feudal Age play from Probe is going to pay off. He played this one perfectly. The moment he realized that his opponent is uh, going into Castle Age, or he has reached Castle Age, he has gone very, very aggressive over here. Because if he doesn't do that, then Marine Lord will just get the Castle Age upgrades and steamroll him in there. Now, I gotta be careful to switch away from uh, the end of the games here, because uh, I don't want to spoil the other games. Unfortunately, looking at the um, recorded games... It's pretty easy to get spoiled, so um, apologies for switching away from that one. That's the drawback of recorded games. We can't really look at the stats, but I feel like the key difference was that, first of all, um, Probe decided to mix in Spearmen, whereas uh, his opponent tried to play with Archers. But it's easier to just go and flood the Spearmen compared to using the Archers, because you have to micro the Archers, and you just have to make sure they don't get picked off by the Knights early on. And, as I said, the other thing is that Marine Lord decided to invest into Castle Age, and Probe realized that he needs to push before that Castle Age starts to become a factor. So, with that, Marine Lord is going to lose the first game. He still has the chance to choose uh, French for himself. But Probe winning with French over here means that he no longer has the option to choose that civilization for the rest of the set. Looks like we are going to Altai as our second game in this set. It's going to be French once again for Marine Lord, and Probe is going to be playing the English. So let's jump straight into that game. English versus French, a historical matchup over here. As you see on Altai, we sort of have the two players uh, in a passage surrounded by cliffs. On the left side, we have uh, Marine Lord playing as the French once again in blue. And on the right side, Probe is playing as the English in red. So, the English definitely have their tools to deal with the French. What they have to do, though, is that they have to be aggressive, and they have to play with a lot of spearmen and archers. The key word is spearmen. You can't just send in the longbows, because they will die to the knights. You have to mix in a lot of spearmen, otherwise the French heavy cavalry will just melt you in uh, Feudal Age. Looking at the base of Marine Lord over here, he's got the berries, the stone, and the gold all at the back. The woodland is are sort of on the front side of things though. So not a perfect map for Marine Lord, but he has to be satisfied with those mineral locations at the back. Whereas on the other side, for Probe, that gold mine is somewhat underwhelming, I would say. Kind of far from the TC on the right side. There is no real back gold mine whatsoever. There's a nice patch of berries in the wood line here, but I feel like Marine Lord has a slightly better map than his opponent does. Now on this map, if I'm not mistaken, you have a lot of sheep on the outside. So I'll have to check up on that. But you see, you already have quite a lot of sheep coming in here for Probe in red. And also, our blue player, Marine Lord, has collected some sheep right at the start of the game. He's opening with a mill here, immediately getting survival techniques. This is not something that you frequently see from the French. Usually, French just go for uh, sheep into School of Cavalry and Knight's Aggression. This is a much more eco-focused approach from Marine Lord. So... That's the main reason why uh, he's going for it. You see, there's a discount on these technologies for the French over here. Only 35 wood and 70 gold to get that upgrade for Marine Lord. And it's a pretty massive boost to your food income. So it will pay off in the next one or two minutes or so. It might delay the feudal age of Marine Lord a tiny bit, but he's going to have such a powerful eco behind this one to back this up. Meanwhile, on the other side, looks like standard fast feudal uh, with the English by probe. Here comes the lumber camp. He's getting close to feudal age. And he's probably going to play longbows for now with the council hall. But we'll probably follow it up with some spearmen. So you see, it's already paying off for Marine Lord to get that survival techniques in uh, quite early. Because if you look at his food count, it's not that much worse compared to probe's one. And he has gotten a fairly expensive technology early on. So... That's gonna pay off pretty soon. Looks like Probe can already go up. Here comes the Council Hall. He's pulling the Gold Miners to get that building up. And the reason why he's doing it is because his army composition, the Longbows and the Spearmen, will be food and wood heavy. He doesn't really need gold. He's still mining a bit of a gold, which makes me wonder if he's just gonna keep one villager on the gold so that he's gonna have enough gold for the Blacksmith upgrades. But we'll have to see about that one later. 
Looks like the School of Cavalry is on the way for Marine Lord in blue. Right next to the hunt, I kind of like that. It's going to help protecting this side of uh, Marine Lord's base. Now, this is a fairly volatile map, and I think if you're playing the English here, you can consider going for some Vols, sort of to limit the opponent's chances of raiding you. Like, if you think about it, Vol here, Vol here, rather easy to do, same thing here on the right side, and uh, potentially a little bit over here, and you limit the opponent's movement a lot. Obviously, the Knights can burn down the Vols, but at least if they are starting to attack your Vols, you see them coming. So, you would pretty much limit the raiding potential of Marine Lord quite a bit. Looks like Probe is actually going for a second Town Center here, so... I'm not gonna say a greedy approach here, but it's minimum ambitious. Because that assumes that uh, he's not gonna die to the Knights here. Uh, he's gonna spot the School of Cavalry, but I think that's so predictable from the French that... There is just nothing uh, that he needs to be surprised about here. Looks like for Probe, he's a little low on Wood. So I'm not sure how he's going to be able to afford a second uh, town center over here right now. Especially if he starts making long bows as well. Maybe this is for storm wars. It's possible he wants to play storm wars and just play a slow game. Council hall almost done. As on the other side, the school of cavalry is also almost finished. Looking at the upgrades right now. No forest tree for either player. The only eco upgrade that we have right now in is the survival techniques for the villagers of Marine Lord. The two Age of Landmarks will finish approximately at the same time. And you see, Marine Lord will spot the stone mining operation of his opponent. Looking at Probe right now with that wood count, it's actually possible that he will want to go for uh, a second TC at some point. But we'll have to see. First Knight already queued up by uh, Marine Lord here. Now, the thing is that the Britons, if you have a lot of longbows with the Network of Castles bonus, they can also pick off knights from a distance. So it's possible for the Britons to play a quite defensive game here as well. And with that stone for probe, that's going to be a second town center. I think you kind of want to place it either over here on the wood and the berries or potentially on the gold mine. So here the idea for probe most likely is that when enemy units get into the vision of the town centers for the Britons, you see if I select it, into this um, glowing circle, not the one that's like dash and wedge. If enemy units get into this circle, it's going to give 25% attack speed boost to all surrounding units. Like you see, these little red longbowmen are glowing from happiness right now, or more precisely, they're glowing from the Network of Castles bonus. So this allows the English to defend quite nicely against the early knights. Although it's still going to be difficult because your archers don't do a lot of damage to knights. It's all about just having a lot of archers out and with a high rate of fire and just slowly grinding down the armor of those knights. You see, Marine Lord is uh, trying to push away Probe from that town center, but eventually, with those longbows coming in, Marine Lord will have to just disengage. Looks like he's using his knights to chase down the scout of Probe, which is good for a red player, I believe, simply because... Uh, a red player probe just wants to boom on two TCs. Now, one thing that Marine Lord could do in this scenario is just add his second town center as one, play an eco heavy game, and that's exactly what we're about to see here. He is going for a second town center as well. Potentially, oh, that's a beautiful spot. It's going to overlook this little crossing here, so he's gonna know exactly if there's enemies coming around. There is gonna be a gold mine close to it, there is uh, berries, and there is even a big stone mine in here. So that's an absolutely amazing town center spot for Marine Lord out there. Meanwhile, um, the echoes should be rather even for now. Looks like Probe is just playing full longbows into a very, very eco-heavy approach. I think that the Britons are kind of weak uh, against the French if they don't play a lot of spearmen in Feudal Age. So once we get to Castle Age... This could be way better for Probe, and I think a slow game here actually helps him. Because he has the time to mass his longbows, potentially get to Castle Age, mix in a couple of crossbowmen as well. So I feel like the person that might need to be aggressive is actually Marine Lord, and his best bet is to try and pressure the gold mine and just prevent his opponent from mining gold. So he would delay the Castle Age of the opponent that way. Looking at uh, Marine Lord, he is grabbing chivalry right now, so 
the few knights that he has will be self-healing now. He doesn't really have a lot of knights. He realizes that his opponent is just booming and he's just gonna play the same game here. French economy should be superior to the English economy for the time being. So he's gonna be more than satisfied just to play two town centers and boom, just like his opponent is doing right now. Once we get deeper into the game and we're seeing farms, the Britain economy is gonna be absolutely crazy. But before farms, the French economy is just much, much better. You see, it's 33 villagers for probe. Marine Lord is at 36. But the resource income per minute, that's actually much better. Wood income, food is pretty even. Gold income is much better for Marine Lord, though. So, rather even economy so far, I would say. There's double barracks coming in, so things are starting to get heat up here. Because probe is potentially going to launch an assault soon. For now, he's just staying back, building up his numbers. Oh, that's a beautiful place for Marine Lord to be at. Look at this. Being on a hill gives you line of sight bonus, and that is the hill to be at. Such a perfect look on the opponent's base. I wonder if Probe knows about that scout out there. He doesn't. It's even better like that. He has no idea about that scout, so he pretty much doesn't know that Marine Lord has an excellent vision around his base. He knows exactly when Probe goes on gold, and that's a very valuable piece of information. And he does so without Probe knowing that the scout is there. And you see, villagers moving in on the gold. Knights come in. Very, very nice uh, map anticipation, sort of, from uh, Marine Lord. He's gonna charge in, pick off one villager over here. Gets another kill, and might even secure a third one here. Indeed, he does. Perfect raid, using that vision to the best of its effect. Another villager goes down. That's absolutely amazing gameplay there for Marine Lord. He got the most out of that raid. Now it looks like Probe is moving up and I think he has a spotted those hunters out there. So he's moving out for those. Unfortunately, when we switch to his POV, we can't see if he spotted that simply because the game doesn't show us. It's a bug in spectating. But I believe that he has scouted this before because he had a scout that was chased around by knights before. This could be a nice raid from Probe if Marine Lord doesn't notice it, but Marine Lord sees it. So... He's gonna retreat for the time being, and in he comes from the behind with knights. I see some archers being mixed in as well by Marine Lord, so... Now the micro is clear. He tries to pick off the spearman with his archers, and then dive in with the knights. Looks like Probe might hide his army in that stealth forest, as... Uh, it looks like he's running back even more so. He's still being chased by Marine Lord's knights. Uh, spearmen are being pulled to fight this one. Look at this, that's actually a very nice use of the campfire for a longbowman here. It only heals the longbowman around the camp, though, so it doesn't affect the spearman. By the way, you can actually come up all the way to this ridge. Look at this hill! Uh, it just looks a little weird, I'm not gonna lie. These guys are mountain climbers over here, and we can say that they are the kings of the hill. It's gonna give a very, very nice vision as well for Probe. Imagine that you have a scout here, by the way, for either of the players would give you such a massive view over the opponent's base, or if you get a scout here for Marine Lord, would overview this area entirely. Such a good chance to get a lot of map vision, and I kind of love that, to be honest. This is actually a very, very good mechanic that you get vision with the hill, because it really makes you value those hills around the map. So far, it's 47 villagers for Probe, and Marine Lord is at uh, 59 that's a pretty significant villager discrepancy now. Part of this is the French training villagers faster. It's only 17 villagers, or 17 seconds, excuse me, as opposed to 20 from other civilizations. But part of that is also the villagers that have been killed by Marine Lord, as it looks like we are looking at a pretty significant fight here. The archers will be able to focus down the spearmen, and this is what I was talking about. When you play against the French with the British, you gotta have a lot of spearmen, otherwise you will have a really, really difficult time. The longbows just can't do much against those knights. Looks like Probe is uh, going to get away here, which is something that he has to be happy about. He could have lost that mass of archers to the knights. Castleage on the way for Marine Lord as well, that, that French economy kicking in. Whereas on the other side, Probe is uh, not really close to Castleage either. And since he's gonna be forced to fight this one off, he won't be able to bank up resources for some time. He needs to pump out army. He's triggering multiple campfires over here. Also trying to think about the palings. Just needs to hold these huntables for the time being. 
He needs to find a way up to Castle H himself. He's already behind an eco, which is not ideal. But with the English, you can actually go for your Castle H landmark, which is a town center. And uh, I think it's called the King's Palace. The King's Palace uh, as a town center would give you a third town center to work with, so you could actually reduce that villager difference over time, because you would be three TCs against two. Looking at the Blacksmith upgrades of Marine Lord, he does have... Uh, Looks like both attack upgrades, both melee and ranged, and he also has a ranged defense upgrade. No melee defense upgrade just yet for him, but that's probably secondary priority. There is only a couple of Spearmen on the field right now. Still no Castle Age from Probe, and I feel like this window could be massive for Marine Lord. The moment he reaches Castle Age with the French, he's going to get the attack upgrade on his melee units, so that's already pretty decent. And uh, after that... He could just get the Veteran Knight upgrade. Uh, he has went up with the Guild Hall, so he's actually going for the Eco Focus landmark. But he still can grab the Veteran upgrade and Cantle Saddles over here immediately. You see, he's hiding his forces inside that Stealth Forest, which buys him time to get the upgrades, heal up the Royal Knight using the Chivalry. And behind this one, now Probe knows that he needs to get to Castle Age ASAP. He now has a lot of farming Eco, by the way, which helps immensely. These farms work with plus 20% gather rate right now, will be 30 in Castle Age. And I feel like what Probe really needs is Stone Wars, believe it or not. Like, he has to hold such a narrow choke point here, with one of the best defensive civilizations in the entire game. And he's got a very powerful eco behind this one as well himself, so a couple of Stone Wars would help immensely. Looks like since Probe is getting pushed really heavily, he's not gonna go for the King's Palace, he's going for the even more so defensive landmark which is the White Tower. This is basically a keep, something that helps immensely for a probe to try and hold this one, but you've got to finish that keep, otherwise it's not going to help that much. And you see, now the archers from Marine Lord are veteran, they are picking off the spearmen, and the probe's army is just evaporating over here. I see only seven military right now for probe. These are veteran knights as well, and it's very possible that the White Tower even gets denied, which would be GG, I believe. I don't think that Marine Lord, uh, or excuse me, Probe can actually afford to just have his Castle Age progress denied, and that's exactly what's gonna happen. Probe is down to 47 villagers, whereas his opponent, Marine Lord, is at 84. And indeed, Probe taps out. French once again victorious. Today, in the other sets of the tournament, uh, we have seen that French are extremely powerful. But part of this is, I believe, that uh, if Probe maybe plays a little more defensive, this could have been a slightly different game. Part of this was the fact that his army got uh, intercepted in the middle of the map. And after that, as I said, a bit of a walling would help immensely at just containing the damage those knights can do. I'm not saying that would have uh, won the game here for himself, because the French economy is still more powerful. On the other hand, I believe that with a bit of a walling, he could have potentially made his base a tiny bit safer, dragged this game out, and the late game economy of the English is insanely powerful. Like, you would get 25% farming boost already in Castle Age. And in general, once the villager counts equal out, the English economy is just so powerful. With this being said, both players have lost their French because uh, both of them won a game with that civilization. So neither of them can use it for the last game, which will be on Hill and Dale. And it looks like these players are just going for the standard easy-to-learn civilizations. We have seen French versus French. French versus English, and now we're going to see English versus English. Alright, so welcome everybody to game number three. In this best of three here, in between Marine Lord and Probe, the winner gets into the main event of Genesis. Only eight players qualify for the $20,000 tournament, the first major Age Vampires 4 event. We will have on the right side of the map, Marine Lord as a blue English, and on the left side, it is probe as red english as well i'm not gonna lie i feel like this game could be very very slow paced this map is pretty well defendable you see there is basically three crossings to wall for each player and english is one of the best defensive civilizations in the game anyways so it's very possible we'll just see players walling and booming behind this one now it might be worth talking about the gold mine spawns over here which seems to be pretty bad for marine lord he's got his big gold mine in the front of his base, at the bottom of the hill. In the majority of the cases, this map spawns with two small golds and a big gold on your hill. 
it's not guaranteed that your big gold is going to be on your heel, but it's like there at 80% of the cases or so. So you sort of take that for standard. But when it's not, you're sort of in a tough position because you just have so little gold to work with. You see, Marine Lord's hill has 4,000 gold on it, and then he has to move out to this little gold or this big gold. Whereas his opponent has two small deposits of 8,000 gold combined, plus the big deposit is also within, uh, or at least on top of his hill, easy to wall off. So, I'm not gonna lie, Marine Lord uh, has gotten a little screwed over by the map generation over here. So, looks like standard English stuff over here. I would expect a couple of longbows to maybe pop out, but this is one of those situations where I think walling will just make the most sense here. Because if you wall, your opponent will have little chance of getting through that. Archers won't be able to take down walls by themselves, and there isn't really going to be a support unit that can burn down those walls. So, you might even be able to play this one entirely without archers. You will probably still use the Council Hall to go up to Feudal Age just because that's a much better um, landmark than the other one. I think the other landmark heals your units nearby, but that's not going to be helpful for your eco anyways. So might as well go up with the Council Hall, which will allow you to go for longbows uh, in the long run. In comes the landmark from Marine Lord. Landmark. Boss Champ. On the other side, the villagers are also marching up, and we should see the landmarks being dropped in a matter of moments. And these villagers take their time, I'm not gonna lie, they're marching left and right. It looks like Marine Lord just now has the food for it, and he's gonna place the council hall right next to the town center. I just wanna highlight that the council hall's entrance is on this side, and it is right at the back of the town center. So, people that want to leave the council hall, I have bad news, because you will be walled into this building. Of course, this doesn't affect gameplay, it's just a... Small aesthetics thing. Um, we will have a council hall as well for our red player probe. Marine Lord was trying to look and check what his opponent is up to with that landmark. But I think it's fairly predictable that we're going to see council hall for both players. Vols are coming up for probe on the left. So far Marine Lord hasn't really bothered voling just yet. Looks like he's going to start adding villagers on stone. So he knows exactly that this could be a slow paced game. And on this map I feel like you have to play at least two town center boom. Whereas on the other side, the probe is also going to send villagers to stone. So, once again, very similar builds here. The idea will be to have at least two town centers. You could even justify going up to Castle Age of the King's Palace, so you have a third one quite early on as well. No! So, um, as things stand, looks like Marine World isn't really bothering voling. I guess he's just gonna make longbows then and make sure that his opponent isn't gonna push him with longbows. Although I still feel like I prefer what Probe is doing, playing a little safer and just going for the Palisades on the left and on the north as well. Keep in mind that Marine Lord can chill on his hill for a long time simply because he doesn't have a lot of gold on this hill. So that might be the reason why Marine Lord isn't playing as defensive as Probe does. Probe has a lot more resource on his hill than Marine Lord has. The rare double-headed deer can be seen over here, as these two deer are apparently stuck in each other. Guys? Guys? This is how little deer are made. Let's leave them to that intimate moment. Anyways, Council Hall is up. We will have enough stone for a Marine Lord for a second Town Center. In fact... Um, I think he might keep a couple of villagers on stone for a little longer for potential stone walls even. That could be an interesting idea. And that would make me understand why he didn't go for any palisades. Looks like uh, the second EC will probably come up here on the wood and the berries. Potentially over here. That's also a nice alternative spot. But based on the villagers heading, that DC is probably going to be somewhere around over here. Ooh. Ooh, all the way out here on the stone and the berries. So it looks like Marine Lord will actually play open. Now, this DC should discourage any kind of aggression from longbows on this side. So I guess it's fine not to have walls here. I would still like to see some walls here from Marine Lord though, because I feel like that's the most exposed part of his base. Leaving this open is probably fine as well, because he's got a good vision around that. And considering that Probe is not making any longbows, 
Marine Lord is fine not walling. You see, Marine Lord has his scout up here, so he's checking what Probe is doing. And I wonder if Probe found this hole here, because there is definitely a walkable passage in between the forest and the rocks. And Marine Lord has seen it. But has Probe seen it? Because he's walled on the north, he's walled on the south. But does he know there is an opening in the middle? It's a little difficult to spot, but if you look closely, you can see it. Now, as a caster, I have time to spend watching at this hill here, so I can spot it. But a player that's focusing on the game so much might not have the time to see that, but it looks like Probe is gonna realize what's going on. I'm not sure if he just saw the scout of Marine Lord or something like that, or he just delayed this wall as it is, but he's gonna be walled as well. And considering that he's not going for a single longbowman, Marine Lord doesn't really have to sweat this one, he can just play uh, without walls here. Looks like Marine Lord hasn't gotten the survival techniques upgrade just yet. Looking at uh, Probe, he's also missing an upgrade, two TCs for now for both players. And uh, it looks like neither of them are mining stone anymore. So, as things stand, it's gonna be a two TC build for both. This is definitely one of the more campy maps, I would say, so... Not necessarily perfect for tournament environment, but I guess it balances out the more open maps of uh, the map pool. Because there's a lot of open maps in a map pool, the fact that you have something that's slower paced actually helps uh, potential underdog players against stronger opponents. And we also see a lot of interesting sifts here. I think this is one of those maps where Delhi may be legitimate. We have seen in the main event, not main event, excuse me, the other qualifier sets. Some Chinese being used, Abbasids could be legit, so this is definitely one of those maps that can bring in a little bit more uh, diversity when it comes to civilizations. Looks like the scout will be used to try and burn down the walls, uh, Probe will make a couple of longbows here to react. Doesn't really need to sweat this one, to be honest. He should be able to hold this simply because he's got uh, an easier time reinforcing his uh, longbows. And you see he's gonna try to avoid losing a single longbowman here. He's making quite a few of them though, so... Currently, Marlene Lord is forcing his opponent to make like six, seven longbowmen while he's attacking with three. So that's a pretty big investment for Probe to make over there. Probe, on the other hand, did lose uh, his scout over here. You can actually see the dead body silhouette here behind the town center. So the TC finished off the scout. So Probe will pretty much be blind over here. If I wanted to be funny, I would just say he could send out a longbowman and probe his opponent's base to see what his opponent is up to. Or potentially make a second scout on the TC that also works. Looks like now he's moving for the hunt. Marine Lord is uh, also moving out for the hunt. Looks like we're just gonna be in for a very, very slow game here. Looking at the food and wood bank, those are actually pretty close. But Marine Lord is mining stone once again, so there will be a third town center. Now, making a third TC here would make sense because it's on the hunt and on the wood. But I feel like Marine Lord, what he really needs is a TC here on the gold. Simply because, uh, remember that he's slowly running out of gold inside his base. So he's gonna need uh, a town center that secures these gold mines. And this will be the perfect opportunity to build that. Looks like a gate is uh, being established here by Probe. He invested more into his army than his opponent did. He even got the healing campfires upgrade. So might as well move out, he says. And once the gate is uh, finished, the archers will come out. They will be able to pick off Marine Lord's scout here, potentially. Marine Lord reacts just in time. He's gonna eat one volley, but not a second one. Here come the archers as well for Marine Lord. He's getting some more of out. He is getting a blacksmith as well, coming for a steel arrow. Whereas on the other side, I don't see a blacksmith for our red player. So, once again, Marine Lord's army is going to be better than Probe's one. So, Probe will be forced to retreat for the time being. In fact, he's back at home. Doesn't really want to fight this one right now. And there is a scout being added. So, as I said, he kind of needs vision on the map. Otherwise, he's just completely blind. And that's just so, so dangerous being completely blind here. You have no idea what your opponent is planning. For what Probe knows, Marine Lord could be massing 50 longbows here and preparing a ram push. He just needs vision. Speaking of vision, you see the scout. He hasn't spotted the archers simply because they were hidden in the stealth forest. And it looks like Marine Lord will be able to avoid being seen here. Meanwhile, for Marine Lord, he's actually very close to a third town center being added. 
Whereas on the other side, Probe is close to the Castle Age. I actually feel like it's better if Probe just goes Castle Age with the King's Palace instead of Mining Stone for a third Town Center even. I don't necessarily like that for Marine Lord. Um, here comes the third TC. It's going to be on the gold and the wood once again on the top of the hill. And now, Probe has seen the archer, so he knows uh, the approximate strengths of his opponent's army. He probably knows that it's more than what he has, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him adding a couple more longbows. Looks like a market is being added because Probe is floating a lot of food, but doesn't have the gold to click up. So, his castle age here is getting heavily delayed by the fact that his eco is unbalanced. He's just floating so much food and not enough gold, he's trying to rush up a market to balance his economy. Yeah, Meanwhile, for uh, Marine Lord, looking at those resources, those are not far away from Castle Age either. But it looks like Marine Lord is investing more into his army right now, getting the attack upgrade in already. I wonder if he's uh, thinking about the siege upgrade. Doesn't seem like it's the case. So far, it's just attack and defense upgrades for Marine Lord. Castle Age can now come in for Probe. As I said, he's still floating a lot of food here. And now the question is, what building is he going for? I think the King's Palace makes a lot more sense. And it's possible he's even going to try to build it over here. Uh, still no Castle Age landmark. He's dropping multiple stables, though. And getting a couple of early knights in could actually be pretty massive. Getting to Castle Age, popping out like five knights. And then you could easily destroy that army of longbows from Marine Lord. Here come the archers, but as I said, the archers themselves will struggle getting through the walls. The only thing that really is dangerous against those walls is that scout, to be honest. Castle Age coming in, and that is, I believe, the King's Palace. Indeed it is. That's the third town center for uh, Probe, instead of mining stone for a third one like Marine Lord did. Meanwhile, for Marine Lord himself, he's going up. He's using a different landmark. Instead of going for a King's Palace, he's going for a White Tower. So the White Tower is basically a keep. The King's Palace is basically a town center, so he's just making a defensive castle on his gold. I also understand that, although I feel like it could have been a little bit more uh, on the front, so somewhere around over here. So it secures a little bit more map control, because you see that this keep is right here. If the gold miners are on the gold and there are some longbows here, they might still be able to pick off some villagers from a distance. So a couple of tiles more forward would have been a slightly better spot for Marine Lord, I believe. Rope, slightly better castle age time than his opponent but just by a very very narrow margin looks like he's very heavy on stone i'm not sure if this is just the villagers automatically moving to stone and i got my answer they just automatically went on stone so what is pro up to he is uh, getting horsemen out okay now that's not something that his opponent is gonna expect i believe knights maybe horsemen no but i think horsemen is actually a better choice here because marine lord if he has a second archer range he could mix in some crossbowmen and melt the knight. But against the horseman, the only thing that you can have is your palings and spearmen. Siege workshop on the way for Marine Lord, as uh, he sort of secures uh, a bit of a map control with that. He currently has veteran longbowmen. His opponent has uh, no longbowmen upgrades right now. The second defense upgrades is just not coming in. And I feel like right now Probe just wants to play patient and jump on those archers with the horseman mass he has. 73 wills for Probe. 72 for Marine Lord. So that earlier third town center didn't really pay off for our blue, blue players so far. I love how Marine Lord is using that uh, little stealth force in the middle, by the way, to just shelter his army. And let's see if it's Springolds or Manganols from Marine Lord. Probably Springolds is the meta, I would say. Simply because once you have like five or six Springolds, like you can even snipe the opponent's siege. Whereas if you go Manganols, your opponent can just go for spring golds and take you down. Now, the thing I don't like is that I think that you need the veteran longbowman upgrade here for Probe, who, by the way, has 45 on wood. That's an enormous amount of wills on wood. He is about to establish a very, very good farming eco behind this one. It's going to take some time until the farming eco kicks in, but once it does, boy, oh boy, is it going to kick in. It's going to be 25% gathering rate bonus already. For Marine Lord, he already has uh, quite a lot of farming eco going for him. Very nicely positioned farms inside the influence radius of those mills. As it looks like the horsemen are now moving out. They do not have the veteran upgrade though in Castle Age. They do have the second defense upgrade and now they're getting the attack upgrades as well. But I feel like the veteran upgrade would be such a useful thing here. And now Marine Lord is mulling up his base. So he knows that his opponent will probably have some sort of army out now, and he just doesn't want to run into any kind of nasty surprise. 
Meanwhile, for Marine Lord, his vision with the scout here is blocked by the forest, so he doesn't know that there is a whole lumberjacking operation behind this one. With three additional stables coming in and the siege workshop as well for Probe. Probe coming in here with the horseman, just now grabbing the veteran upgrade, and he's gonna kill a couple of whales from his opponent, but that's a lot of firepower he's up against. 34 elite longbowmen, um, or excuse me, veteran longbowmen here, plus the network of castles bonus, the rate of fire on those longbows is just absolutely bonkers, and you see so many horsemen died here, 2, 4, 6, 8 horsemen for minimal gain, I would say. 3 or 4 villagers may have been picked off, but the investment here for probe was just much, much bigger. You can't really fight beneath that uh, castle over there. And now I see Marine Lord moving up and Probe won't really have a good answer to this right now. His longbow numbers are not as good as Marine Lord's are. 42 army right now for Marine Lord. And for Probe it is uh, 24 only. Probe's got a pretty considerable eco lead now. It's 88 for uh, Marine Lord and 94 for Probe. So he's taking over a little bit in terms of economy. But army numbers seem to be way better here for Marine Lord. The question is, what can Marine Lord do with this army here? Because at this point, he's just marching left and right. He can't really find an angle to push his opponent with. Whereas for Probe, he's got the mobility with the horsemen, so he can start raiding the opponent's eco here on the hunt, potentially. Uh, that That's just... Look at that. The horsemen just die like nothing to the longbows. A couple of knights would really help here for Probe, I believe. It would just be such a good thing to soak up arrow power, at least until there is crossbowmen for Marine Lord, because right now it's full longbows for Marine Lord, so the knights would perform a lot better than horsemen do right now. There's also Mangonel coming in by Marine Lord, probably trying to push the left side of the map here. On the right side, I love this uh, outpost from Marine Lord. Look at this. Such a perfect vision here. He knows exactly if anyone is leaving the base of the opponent. And in general, Marine Lord is establishing a very, very nice vision across the map with those outposts being placed. Looks like now we're seeing spearmen coming in. So Marine Lord now knows that his opponent is mixing in a lot of cavalry. We will have, indeed, quite a lot of cavalry here for uh, our red player, but most of it is horsemen and not knights. I feel like if they were knights, they would be so much po more powerful. Some range is being added for Probe as well. Production won't be a problem for him. He is at uh, six stables right now, and he's gonna have like four or five ranges worth of production as well. So, his army production is not gonna be a big uh, problem. The question is uh, the resources he needs to afford that. Uh, that's actually a nice move here from... Uh, Marine Lord picking off the Monk going off for a Relic. There's a Mangonel set up here for Probe. A second Mangonel is also coming in as the Spring Goats for Marine Lord are picking off the Siege Weapons though and I feel like the return value here for Probe is just not enough on those Mangonels. The Spring Goats are really coming in clutch and you see it takes so many arrows for those red longbows to finish them off and in the meanwhile Probe is eating big Mangonel shots from our blue player's Mangonel. The final Mangonel shot was missing Probe now needs to deploy a lot of healing campfires to heal his army back up. Looks like he might be able to tank this one out now with the Mangano support and the horsemen arriving. But there was definitely a couple of heated moments over here for him. Now he is the one chasing on this army of longbows however. And uh, with that Mangano it's going to be difficult for uh, Marine Lord to fight this one. What a fight this was. A lot of big Mangano hits out there. It didn't really materialize in killed units. But you see a lot of units here were damaged for both parties. And it seems like both of them will disengage for the time being. Both of these players are focused very heavily on the fights, you see. So their ecos are kind of unbalanced. Probe right now is floating quite a lot of resources, especially a lot of stone. Makes me wonder if he will go for the defensive keep once he can afford it. Like, currently, Marine Lord is on the run. So if you're a probe, you could justify a castle on one of the sacred sites to secure that for yourself with some extra gold income. We saw Probe uh, going for the relics here, so that's part of his plan. Picking those up. I haven't really seen a monk for uh, our blue player Marine Lord yet. Looks like we will have uh, the usual healing in here for both parties. Springles and Mangonos will be added by Marine Lord and he will sort of attempt a push again. By the way, the keeps for the English can actually train units over here and as you see, um, for example, Probe 
or Marine Lord could use this one to add Spearmen. Potentially Men at Arms could be an interesting addition. Some Knights as well. Or even Siege Weapons. He doesn't even need a Siege Workshop to add those. Looks like he will be at the magical combination of uh, two Mangonels, three Springles. And that's a pretty sizable force. Mangonel coming in here though from Probe. There is a staggered formation on the Archers for Marine Lord. Uh, but I feel like the big thing here is that the Horsemen were just not able to get to the mangonels and now a lot of those longbows here from probe are just heavily damaged he's the one on the run and that staggered formation is just helping immensely for marine lord making sure that his longbows will not eat any kind of big mangonel shot whereas on the other side i feel like probe actually took some big hits from those mangonels now it's marine lord crawling up in the face of his opponent Unit compositions are identical, so once again it comes down to unit control, and this could be big. Here come the horsemen with the big loop around, there is a mangonel set up as well for probe, but the big thing is happening here at the back, if those horsemen can get to those springles and the siege weapons, this could be a slaughter. In fact, I don't see a single spearman here for marine lord, if those mangonels go down, this entire army for marine lord will be in jeopardy. You see, the spring golds are all dead. Uh, actually, there is two more out there, but Marine Lord will be losing considerable numbers here. He has to be happy with the fact that he can save at least some of his archers over here because the horsemen are focusing the siege weapons. But that was an enormous victory there for Probe. Looking at the resources, Marine Lord is not far away from Imperial Age, though, and you see with that market usage, he is about to click up to Imperial, I believe. Now, a bit of an overextension from Probe, he is going to lose those horsemen to the spearman of the opponent some more spring goals join the party looks like probe is keen on chasing and it might be worth it to be honest because he still seems to have the numbers advantage over here spring goals won't do that much against the archers in low numbers simply because they do a lot of damage to like a single target and you have a lot of longbows here you want a mass destruction weapon spring goals will be very helpful taking on the mangonel though the mangonel actually gets a good shot in looks like the spring goals are Able to finish it off just before the spring goals would be taken down by the horsemen, or are they? One spring gold gets away, the other one gets picked off. Looks like there were two monks out here from Marine Lord that just got caught in the big fighting as Marine Lord is already up to Imperial Age. Probe is not far away from clicking up himself, but that's still a long time he needs to bridge through now. So, just like he did in the first game, he's gonna do the exact same thing. Try to force a fight before the upgrades come in for Marine Lord. And you see, behind this one, He's gonna have the resources for Imp as well. He needs 2400 food and 1200 gold for that. He's probably gonna rush up his Imperial Age landmark with like 15 20 villagers, I would expect. Right now, it's still veteran longbowman for uh, our blue player. Still, veteran horsemen are charging in. But I think Marine Lord must be almost done with the elite upgrade here. Here comes the Imperial Age for Probe. Marine Lord is holding this one so far um, with the network of castles bonus over here. Um, still no elite longbow upgrade just yet for Marine Lord. Probe on the way to Imperial. So far, he's the one applying the pressure. Probe at 34 army, and Marine Lord is at uh, 23 only. So, slightly better army numbers for Probe. And he's actually able to take some very good fights here. Taking down those expensive spring golds is definitely helpful. Marine Lord in Imperial, but still missing those important upgrades. I want to look at how those are doing, but I just, I'm just scared to switch away from this fight, because we might miss on a big Mangonel shot if I do. Looks like now Probe will retreat upon seeing the Mangonel using Staggered Formation. So look at, let's look at the upgrades. Uh, oh, that's so bad here. That's so, so bad for Marine Lord. You see, he's so focused on the Archer Micro that he forgot that he's got the Elite Upgrade queued up behind a bunch of Longbowmen. This is delaying his uh, elite upgrade by such a long time. This is all about the fact that he's so focused on the fights that he's not even noticing that. He was just like, okay, I need the production buildings and I need to queue up my upgrade. He spent like a whole total of half a second getting that upgrade button pressed. By the way, Marine Lord has picked up three relics, so he's got a pretty nice gold income from that. Something I just want to highlight real quick. Now he realized what's going on, now that we don't have that much fighting, uh, so he's gonna be able to bring in the elite upgrade, but that bought precious seconds for uh, Probe, who is now also an Imperial, so he can grab the elite upgrade himself. Volley, also very, very important uh, upgrade for those longbows. You see, it's also an ability, just like the palings, 
and in increases your attack rate by quite a bit. Looks like Probe is very, very heavy on the Horseman play, though. And uh, it looks like he's getting the Elite Horseman upgrade as well. That could be pretty nice. Marine Lord will see these Horsemen on the north, by the way, using that um, outpost. So he saw them passing by. You should know they're coming. On the north, it's very possible to try and get through those Palisades with that many Horsemen. I think that's the main thing for Pro, but it looks like he might be going for the TC here. That's actually a university, not even a town center. Um, that makes life more difficult for those gold miners. And if Pro paid attention to this side, he could have just jumped on the gold miners at kill like 15. Instead, he's trying to rush up hill here, which seems like it's a horrible idea. Feels like it's just gonna be a massacre. Looks like he's willing to sacrifice a lot of the horsemen over here to the arrow fire just to get into the opponent's eco and he actually does get into the opponent's eco. Now it's going to be extremely hard for Marine Lord to clean this one up. There's going to be horsemen everywhere. Look at how Probe is splitting up his forces. It's all about coming in from multiple directions and just distracting your opponent as much as you can. Spreading out his attention, making sure that you can kill as many villagers as you can. And behind this one, I would say Probe is about to push up the southern part of the map. He's got to keep it down south over here. As it looks like Marine Lord will be able to clean this one up uh, quite rapidly. Marine Lord is at 200 population, Probe is at only at 180, but that's because he lost a lot of now elite horsemen here. With elite longbowmen in now, as well as uh, the volley upgrade soon coming in for uh, Probe, he could think about pushing the middle. And he kind of needs to think about that, because... One thing I'm noticing is that he's running out of gold. If you take a look at uh, Probe's map right now, this is the big gold that he could take next, but that's actually seen by Marine Lord. And there is just no more gold mines on this side. The closest one that he can take is like this one. In fact, he was mining it for some time, but that's just way too exposed now. Whereas for Marine Lord, he actually has control over the northern gold-rich side of the map. You see... The southern part isn't really rich in gold, it has a lot of wood lines, but not a lot of gold. Whereas the north has a lot of gold, but very very limited amount of wood lines. So, right now holding the north is actually more precious, because Marine Lord can deny gold from his opponent. Looks like uh, the sacred site is being captured by a probe, but that's gonna be a short-lived effort. That poor monk is gonna bite dust here to the elite spearmen and the longbows. More bombards are in the party. Alongside Spring Golds. Now, the Bombards will take down the Mangonels very nicely, and they also do a lot of damage versus the Archers. But if there is Spring Golds, they can take them down quite easily. Uh, looks like Probe will have to pull his Bombards back. There is a nice raid of Horsemen coming in here, and they took down some Villagers. But Probe is going to lose most of that cavalry to the Keep's Fire. Big fight coming in here. The network of castles applying over here as well for Probe. So he's going to have that attack rate boost. Looks like he's going to lose his siege weapons. But he will be able to force Marine Lord back for the time being. A keep is coming up on the north. That is going to deny some gold from Marine Lord as we see our blue player securing the sacred site. Something that Probe could stop with those horsemen. Instead he's looping all the way around on the north. Some more siege workshops in for Marine Lord. So... I would think that he's going for Springholds now, simply because he sees that his opponent is pretty heavy on the cannon side of things. So might as well have something that can snap those down. Looks like the horseman indeed returned north and they actually failed to snipe the monk. You see the monk is right now garrisoned inside this tower. The tower will still go down and the monk should bite the dust. Probe is also at 200 population right now. So things are uh, evening out in terms of population. A lot of horsemen in for Probe. I feel like uh, at this point, adding men-at-arms for Probe could be a game-winning move. He's up against spearmen and a lot of archers, and men-at-arms would counter both of that. That's potentially an option. Alternative is that he's just gonna play Hera style, or at least Hera Age Vampires 2 style, and just use the cheap horsemen to try and raid the opponent. And sort of just grind down the economy of Marine Lord here. Looks like we have uh, hit a little bit of a bottleneck here with the battle. Right now it's 134 villagers for Probe. For Marine Lord it is 125. We do have uh, the horsemen coming in here. 
doing some harassment, but they really don't accomplish much. As I said, the Monk on the North is now gone. So, some more ranges on the way for Marine Lord. He's not gonna master hunt, he's gonna have 8 ranges just over here, and he probably has like 5 more back at home. Also quite a lot of barracks, so a lot of production available right now. Meanwhile, here comes uh, the push from Probe. He's aiming for the south right now, and he's got cannon to support this. And the cannons can make quick work with castles, that's the big thing here. Trebuchets have longer range, but lower firepower against keeps, while cannons do a whole lot of damage to keeps here. You see, one shot is like 500 HP, so you need like 10 shots. Um, looks like um, Marine Lord might not be able to stop that one, I just don't see a lot coming from him. Looks like he's got uh, the Flaming Arrows upgrade though, and the Arrow Volley as well. On the other side, Volley is in, but no Flaming Arrows just yet. Can Marine Lord keep that keep up? It's a pretty important keep because uh, that's the really the thing that's protecting the... Uh, my tongue got twisted there. So, that's the only keep that's protecting the southern part of uh, Marine Lord's base. Looks like there is no flaming arrows right now for Probe. He's repositioning the, the cannon so that he can keep firing. The cavalry do charge in on the archers. They can't really seem to pathfind their ways really well, but... Just the brute force archer numbers, supported by the fact that the horseman can soak up the arrow fire, seem to be enough here. For Probe, he's able to take down the keep here, and uh, he is the one pushing up. He is the one pushing up over here. A reminder that we have an even scoreline, and whoever wins this game gets into the main event. So, quite a lot of things uh, going down over here in this decider game. Here comes another wave of horsemen, and I feel like Marine Lord is just losing more and more map control. He still has the flaming arrows, though. He's got 14 damage on those longbows as opposed to 12. That's a pretty nice advantage for Marine Lord over here. And somewhat surprisingly, he still has the score lead, but I'm not 100% sure if that actually applies, simply because his opponent is now starting to rate him pretty heavily, and I see map control being lost here for Marine Lord. Here come the cannon, though. That's a lot of cannon. For a Marine Lord. A couple of good shots on there could easily annihilate the army of Probe. There is one cannon going down from our Red Player Probe, and Marine Lord will take down the other one as well. Here come the horsemen to potentially snipe the siege weapons. The bombards are actually focusing down the horsemen now, and this is a beautiful defense here for Marine Lord. Those flaming arrows are really paying for their price right now, because they're just absolutely shredding everything, including the cavalry here. Not a lot of cavalry on field, and now the cannons can start to take some shots on the opponent's archers here. This is an insane hold here for Marine Lord. As I said, that plus two attack is actually pretty decisive in this one here. Plus, you got a healing aura for both players in here. Um, we have a Mangonol now in as well. That Mangonol could take a shot on the longbows of Probe. Probe's longbows are just running out here. On the other hand, he's bringing in more and more horsemen. There is some cannon coming in too with no more longbows for uh, Probe. Spearmen can also be mixed in by Marine Lord, and we are seeing that happening right now. Still, probably just flooding units all across the map, you see. He just wants to wind down the opponent's army here. Marine Lord being pushed back at uh, a decent pace. There is going to be a defensive keep coming in here. Probe could just start sieging that immediately. And it looks like uh, there is enough firepower here for Marine Lord to hold this one. Probe will need the Flaming Arrows as well. I'm not sure where his university is at, but he desperately needs that upgrade. He also needs biology if he hasn't gotten it yet, because that would buff the HP of his cavalry units by quite a bit. Would help nicely for those horsemen. And it looks like the spring golds that are now upgraded with roller shadow triggers can take down the cannon from a distance. And Marine Lord is pushing this one back. Here comes another potential big mangonel shot. Nice hit over there for Marine Lord. Still no flaming arrows for a red player. That's actually a pretty big deal here. You see all the blacksmith upgrades are in, but not the university upgrades apparently. I'm not even sure if Probe has a university himself. Now, it's worth noting that uh, now Probe has a market under his control. So, even if he starts running out of mineable gold, which seems like it's getting closer to him... In fact, uh, Probe right now is 12 on... Oh, excuse me, that's Marine Lord. Probe right now is 10 on gold. 
He's basically running out of gold as we speak. He could still try to set up trade. Or if that's not a thing for him, he can also get the unique upgrade for the English, which allows the farmers to generate gold as they are farming. Looks like we have a bit of a traffic jam over here. Nice micro by probe to use the cavalry's bait and pick off the spearmen. I actually want to check if that upgrade is in, and then the answer is no. Such a good upgrade. One gold for every three and a half seconds. That's uh, about 18 or so gold per farm. For 39 farmers for probe, that will be about 800 gold per minute. It's a very, very nice gold income out there. A player that is completely out of gold probably needs that quite a bit, especially because it's a passive income. Nice charge over here by the cavalry. Uh, right now, probe is at 193 population. Marine Lord is only at 160. 107 villagers right now for Marine Lord. Probe is at 119. But Probe's got 64 army and Marine Lord only has 54 of that. Still, right now, Probe is fighting uh, close to Marine Lord's castle. So that helps quite a bit for Marine Lord. And I just don't see enough siege to take that castle down with. The cannon is gone. We're sniped by the Springholds. But here comes a relief force of cavalry. And it looks like Marine Lord will be forced to retreat. Scrambling defense. The... Area effect of these keeps over here with the network of castles bonus helps immensely for Marine Lord to hold this one in the middle. I'm not gonna lie. The fact that he, he got his two castles here in the middle is just massive when it comes to that firepower. Is it enough though? That's the main question because I feel like Marine Lord is slowly getting pushed back here by Probe, who on the other hand is running out of gold. Now, gold is not really a big deal here right now because the two players are spamming the non gold units against each other. The only thing that really costs gold on the field is Siege. But still, having some sort of gold income can still be helpful. Because I feel like if it's a full trash unit composition, so horsemen, archers, potentially spearmen, either of the players has the option to mix in uh, men at arms. And that could be a pretty important factor. You see, Marine Lord is already stonewalling the north, so he knows exactly that he has to play for map control. He has to play for gold control on this map. Both players with a pretty significant resource bank. If you look at the gold income though, Marine Lord is still at like 1500 gold per minute. Whereas Probe is at like 100 or so. Marine Lord also has at least 3 relics. Whereas Probe definitely has less. He has got a maximum of 2 here. If his opponent has 3. I'm not gonna search for his monastery here. Because we'll just be missing a lot of fights. Looks like the Springles are once again going for the cannon. The cannon is able to set the castle on fire. Looks like the cannon will go down to the Springles, but it's possible that this keep might burn down. There's still a lot of HP to go, and there's Voyagers being pulled by Marine Lord to repair it. He's gonna keep that keep alive. And now his force is looking stronger and stronger. Probe down to 158 population. Still has a lot of resources in the bank. 8,000 food and 6,000 wood, so... He can definitely replenish his army, but as I said, it's going to be more and more difficult for him to replenish his siege weapons, and this is what I wanted to see. Men-at-arms from uh, our blue player here. That could be a thing that decides the outcome of the game, and you see now there is a lot of them coming in. They also got the unique upgrade for the English, which gives them a lot more extra armor. So these guys have a whopping 10 melee, 10 ranged armor. For reference, those longbows do 12 damage per hit, so you need, uh, I think, 98 arrows, if my math is correct, or 99 arrows, actually, to kill a single man-at-arms here. And supported by longbows that also have the flaming arrows, something that uh, the red player still doesn't have, it's looking better and better for Marine Lord. Could be his ticket to Genesis, the first major AoE4 event out here. We will see some Lancers being mixed in, so I feel like... Now, Marine Lord is going to start leveraging the fact that he's got gold and his opponent doesn't. Because right now, our red player is completely out of gold. He can still sell some resources and as I said, the passive trickle could be a massive thing. But we also have to ask ourselves a question here. Do these players know about these techs? Or at least some of them? Because in AoE 4, most games don't go very, very deep into Imperial. Especially if this is not your primary civilization. You saw that both players started out with French. So maybe Probe doesn't even know that this upgrade exists for the English. Or he just forget about it. It's always a possibility um, that he doesn't know it. Simply because, you know, he's mainly a StarCraft player. I'm not sure how much time he had to prepare for the event. 
But even if he prepared a lot, I'm fairly certain that he was focusing on the French, and he played well with those. He probably focused on the British as well, but... Ever since the game was released, it's only like, what, one and a half or so weeks? So, people didn't have a lot of time to learn every single trick with these civilizations. And uh, small things like this might not go noticed early on. He's still spamming out the cavalry, but now he's starting to run out of food. And I feel like, as I said, it's gonna be unit quality now that comes into play. Those men at arms, they have 10 melee armor, so those... Horsemen without the charge attack, they do 6 damage per hit. And you see the Spring Gold, they're just taking down all the siege weapons. Probably stuck at like 160 population. Whereas Marine Lord is capped at 200. There is some counter rates coming in, but at this point, Marine Lord's resource bank is big enough to just let villagers die. And you see, Marine Lord has the upgrades in. He is getting that gold trickle from those farms. Something that's extremely important right now. And I feel like we are seeing the end of Probe over here. What a set this was, especially the last game. And I feel like this set is the ultimate mirror set so far. Because we have seen two mirror games, the French mirror and the English mirror, and the two players tried to do something very, very similar in both games, and it just came down to small things, like small decisions being made, uh, some advantage being used slightly better, slightly better micro, slightly better macro. Those are things that it came down to. As, uh, now we got a keep here as well. The keep right next to the neutral market means that Probe will never be able to trade with that. Uh, and uh, now I just feel like Probe is getting pushed back quite heavily. You see, he's actually accessing a gold mine here on the north. But, I mean, Marine Lord already took the castle down over here. And he's getting a keep up here as well. Probe will probably not even notice that because he will be focused on his army potentially. So, all those villagers will go down. And at this point... I think it's just a matter of time now. Marine Lord is kept at 200 population and he's got resources to spam units for probably 5 years. Whereas on the other side, Probe is just dropping in population quite rapidly. And his unit composition here will just be insufficient. He doesn't really have a good answer to the men at arms right now. On the north, as I said, it was an absolute slaughter. Marine Lord still has billions of gold under his control. And I love how he's taking the one that's the most exposed or contested. Because he knows that he wants to take it as long as he can take it. So that if this game goes very long, he still has these gold mines to work with that are rather safe. It looks like the mangonels uh, are crawling up, supported by spring golds. There's the Berkshire Pass for uh, Probe, one of his landmarks. The other landmarks are on the top of the hill. Right now, Probe is only on one relic. His opponent is on uh, three as well. There is a couple of Rebolda Queens being mixed in here, which actually have a lot of firepower against clumped up units. But if the Spring Goats focus them down, it won't matter. Oh, uh, look at the bait from Marine Lord. He's pulling those Rebolda Queen away, and the Spring Goats will just snap them down. And on being set up here at a quite weird position for Marine Lord, that was a bit of a mismicro, I believe, from him. But now it's brute force power. 56 army for uh, Probe, but it's just going down quite rapidly. He's got 64 on farms. I just feel like unit quality, as I said, is gonna matter, and remember, those longbows for Marine Lord had plus two attack over the ones from Probe for a long time because of the flaming arrows. With that, Marine Lord takes game number three over here. He takes the set, and he is the one moving into the main event of uh, EGC Genesis, the first major AoE4 event out there. Congratulations to Marine Lord. A very, very close set, I would say. So, well played by both, we have seen a lot of uh, identical strategies here, and it actually came down to small decisions, uh, small micro things. The first game, which was uh, the French Mirror, came down to Marine Lord, deciding to go Castle Age and just got overrun by Feudal Age units. But after that, um, Probe lost uh, his French, since he won the first game, so he had to play with English. Second game didn't go that well for him, Marine Lord evened it out, and in the English Mirror, Marine Lord comes out victorious. He will be there on the 13th and 14th of November at EGC for the main event of the $20,000 uh, EGC Genesis.